All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Property Players, the podcast where we're talking all things real estate. I have another special guest on for you guys. Uh, it's funny how we connect uh, with a lot of people on social media. You guys have heard me talk about that a bunch. This is another young lady that I've connected with via social media, uh, specifically because she had a rant that I really uh, liked. And so I'll get, I'll get her to talk about that a little bit later in the podcast. Uh, but let, let me introduce Miss, Miss Melissa DeSantis. Thank you for being on the podcast. Hi, Chris. Sure, of course. Awesome, Happy awesome. To That's good to, to hear. Yeah. good to hear. Good to hear, good to hear. So uh, we just jumped straight in on this one. Give, give the people, the listeners, some background on you. Who is Melissa, right? Like, give me the origin story, where you come oh. from. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> a few hours. No. Uh, so yes, I am in Monmouth County, New Jersey, and I didn't grow up here. I grew up out west. I grew up in Utah, but moved out east to New York City when I was like literally the day after I graduated high school and lived in the city for a while and, you know, worked early on and then eventually went to college. Okay and eventually made my way out to New Jersey. I had family out here and been here now in New Jersey for about 20, 20 years or so. Nice, is, is that why you moved originally from Utah? Was for family? No, uh, it's just a different world in Utah. <laughs> for sure. And I guess I knew, I would, my father was from New York and growing up I would come to New York, uh, you know, every summer and just saw a different world out there. So I knew that it was really the East Coast was, was me and uh, where I fit in. That's, that's, mm -hmm. a, that's such a funny story because I, I just moved back from Los Angeles. So, okay. So I was born and raised in Philly and uh, spent some time in Miami and then I wound up moving out to LA and I've been in LA for the past 10 years. And um, people always ask, well, why'd you move back? And I'm like, it's, it's just different. Right, yeah, it's just it's different, different out there. You can't really put your finger on it, but it's just right. it's different. You you know if you're meant to be on the East Coast and in that lifestyle. So that's that's interesting. I could definitely take the weather in Los Angeles oh, for sure. East Coast <laughs> for sure. But outside of that, you know, there's a uh, few perks. But yeah. um, okay, so then got 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 to Jersey. What did you go to school for? Communications. Communication. Uh, well, I went two years at uh, FIT. Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. Got my associates, transferred to Ryder University, graduated there with communication with a communications degree, not knowing you know what I was going to do, sure. and started um, working. Now after I graduated, I was working in New York City for the National Football League, okay. and that was back in 1999, I think. Okay. Uh, so the internet at that time was fairly new, and I was on the internet team. Okay. And to be honest, I remember working there and, and right before I went for an interview being like, okay, well, I don't understand. What's the difference between Google and like, I don't even know, like a regular, you know, the National Football yeah. League. I, I, I had no idea how this internet thing worked. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I worked there for a few, you know, a few, I guess two years, but I knew an office job just wasn't for me. So eventually then I got into medical sales. And was in medical sales for a good five years or so. And that led me to real estate. Okay. How, how did you get introduced to real estate? Did, just something that, that popped up or did somebody uh, actually well, I was um, selling my second home. It was a townhouse moving to a single family home. And I was just very, I enjoyed everything about it. Looking at the homes, the process and wanted to learn more and more about it. I knew that it was something that I was very passionate about, uh, whereas medical sales, I was, you know, it, it was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the perks and the people and everything, but it wasn't like the interest that I had in real estate. Sure. So I said, okay, I'll go part-time and get, do it, you know, get my license and I'll just do it on the side. Mm -hmm. And I got my license, started part-time and quickly learned that uh, in order to be, to be successful as a realtor, it's more than a full-time job. Absolutely. So I took a leap of faith, quit medical sales, you know, um, which was really an eye-opener because I had an expense account, a company car, you know, I had a salary and then commission and going into real estate and, you know, paying for every single piece of paper. 
yeah. that you, you need it. So talk, talk to me about that, Melissa, because that's a that's a big deal. And I know people, and I'm sure you know people that have those golden handcuffs, right? They're <laughs> they're, they're they're in a career, they make yeah. good money, good money, right? But they're just not happy. They're not fulfilled. Right. What what were you going through at that time to make that jump? Like talk about the mindset. I mean, you know, it was when I look back. And I, when I, it's funny because in hindsight, you look back on your life and it's like, how did I move to New York City when I was 16? I wouldn't, I couldn't do that today. Right. And I look back and be like, how did I give up this, you know, stability with medical sales for the, you know, the real estate industry, which is so, you know, volatile up and down. Sure. How did I do that? You know, and I, you know, I just did it. I guess I didn't think or get in my head too much. I just knew it's what I wanted and I was going to somehow make it work. Mm. So a lot of people struggle with that a lot. Yeah. Like I, and I'm sure you, you talk to them. I, I talk to people all the time that are in their career, but they want to branch out and do something else, whether it be real estate, start a business, whatever it is, right. but they can't make that jump. They can't make that transition because of fear or whatever holds them back. So just for somebody that's done it and is, was successful at it, do you have like a couple pointers that somebody could understand or, or, or try to help somebody make that decision a little easier? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, well, I'm, I'm a believer that, you know, we spend so much time of our, so much of our time working that it, it, of course it's about money, but if you're not happy, ultimately, what, what is the money doing? Absolutely. And so you've got to be doing something that you're, you enjoy and you're passionate about. And, for me, I guess it was easier because I kind of dipped my feet into it a little bit first, mm -hmm. starting part time, right. um, so that I really understood what I was getting myself into rather than, you know, leaving my medical sales job and just going straight into real estate full time. Right. So that helped me to kind of understand what this is all about and prepare me as well as to, you know, save up a few months. Um, because when you get into real estate, it's not like you start and you get a, a paycheck. <laughs> right. You start and you're writing up many, many checks. <laughs> Absolutely. So I guess just, you know, kind of not completely giving up my my safety, mm -hmm. if you will, but, you know, testing it a little bit and then knowing, okay, yeah. yes, I like it. I understand this is what it's about. I understand this is what I've got to put into it in order to make it work. And right. then making that that. Yeah. Change. How long was that transition for you? The Probably part about time, the full months. time. I would ah, say probably you said six months. Yeah, I would say and probably talk. about six months. That's good. So and then, to be fair and to be honest, I had gotten married during that time. Got it. So that was a little reassuring because my, you know, my husband had the medical benefits, right? Things like that, things that are important that I think sometimes people don't consider. Sure. They just see oh, all this money in real estate, but there's not a lot of you know those type of benefits that you're you're getting where absolutely. you may be getting with another another company absolutely and again that that's the fear for most people that i know i talk to that want to jump out into real estate uh it's it's all of the other things the the, the benefits the ups and downs of the market and right the the unsurety it really holds a lot of people back so good to hear that that you made that transition so then now you're full time mm -hmm. What was your day to day like in the early stages? Like, take me back to like when you were starting out. What were the What was the day to day like? Well, it, and that's hard to remember. But I quickly got into short sales. Okay. As we were coming off of the height back in oh five, oh six, oh seven, quickly learned the process of short sales. Did a lot of training and got my foot in the door that way. Okay. And I enjoy short sales. I still enjoy doing them. We're not seeing as many as we did years ago, but I think eventually it's, they're going to come back. Sure. So that helped me to, to, to really learn how to work hard because it's not easy to, to get through a short sale. There's a lot of different components and logistics with it. And, but that was, I would say my first year or two, half of my business was probably short sales. Got it. And was it just because it was hot at the time? What, what year was this? So this was around 2008. Around 2008. Yeah. 2008, oh. 2009. Yes. Got it. And so then, right as the market was <laughs> correcting yes, itself. Yes. And then I got pregnant with twins. Wow. Um, in 2000, they were born in 2009. So 
2008, I got pregnant with twins. Wow. And yeah, and so, learning how to juggle twins and this, and this business was was challenging. Talk about that. Because there yeah. again, 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 there's so many moms, soon to be moms. They want to break out. They want to be in business. But now you have that whole, am I a mom? Am I a businesswoman? Yes. How much time do I allot? Like so, again, talk to me about that time period. Like, what were you going through? Yeah, well, it's you know, it's 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 challenging. It's it's a struggle. It's frustrating, and even today, it is hmm. because you don't have that. I don't know if it's possible to have that work life balance. There are times that, you know, more of my time is in this business. And then there are times that it's more with my children. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's difficult to, to find that work-life balance. And I think one myth that people think is, oh, I'll get into real estate and I'll just make my own hours and work when I want. And it's not like that. Right. It's, it's difficult. I mean, if you want to do a good amount of business, you've got to be flexible. And, you know, I, I struggle with that. And, but I do, you know, if my kids, my, my daughter's in dance, my son's in soccer, you know, I'm not going to miss some, like my daughter's dance competition or my son's soccer tournaments for anything, sure. for no amount of, you know, business. It's your Luckily, priorities. Yeah, it's my priority. Absolutely. So in that sense, you can schedule things, but there are times, you know, where I have to get help from friends or family because I'm just, not available to you know run them here or there absolutely so. absolutely I, I don't think people understand and so for the people listening and watching this i don't think people understand how uh to to properly be able to allot your time this thing work-life balance that we talk about it doesn't exist and i'm, I'm right there with you most i i don't think that it, it exists one of the ways i always talk about work-life balance is work-life harmony because there's going to be some time balance gives you the idea that one has to suffer in order for another one to, to be better or you to pay more attention to. Harmony is how things just work together. And as entrepreneurs or as people that are self-employed, run our own business, whatever it is, we have to have harmony in our life. So there are out, there are weeks. I, I explain this to people about my own business. There are weeks I put in 80, 90 hours a week. There are plenty of those weeks and my, and my wife understands and my family, they understand that that's what's going on. It doesn't mean that they got less of me. It's just more of my time had to go over here. But then there's sometimes that my family is the top priority. And just like you said, I won't miss any type of family gathering because that's important. So mm -hmm. it's really about harmony and not judging ourselves, not judging ourselves if we can't spend time in those areas because we have ambitions of things. So the fact that you still struggle with it, trust me, I still struggle with it. I think ev everyone still does. Everyone, and regardless if you have children or not, I think Absolutely. that, you know, people struggle with it. It's, it's very common, but I think we have to get to a place, we have to be open about talking about that. It, there's no right way. There's no perfect sauce or perfect method of how to get there. It's just not judging yourself. So right after you had your twins, what was your business like? Actually, right after I had my twins, I would say, uh, I, and I got settled in with everything, I l went to a uh, Remax office and that's really, and started coaching. Okay. And that's really when my business started to take off. Uh, and I was able to find a, a wonderful, wonderful woman um, to, to care for my kids, not on a full-time basis, but you know, she was there three, four days a week. Sure. So then at that time, I was able to really, you know, work and get, get things accomplished. Yeah. Without her, it would have been hard. But I, you know, you have to have that support system Absolutely. and somebody that you care, you know, you know, care for your children and trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, why, why, why did you go coaching? Why, why did you go into coaching? I guess I felt like, where, where do I go from here? It had been a few years and I was doing, I was doing well. I was making like probably you know, a little bit under a hundred thousand a year, but I said, how do I take it to that next level? Sure. And I knew that I did a lot of research and I just felt that, you know, finding the right coaching company, the right coach would help me to, to move in that direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. And do, do you find that that happens a lot in the industry? Like people are open to coaching or most people aren't? Um, I'd say it's 50, 50. I think people are open to it, but the issue becomes your time and money. Because Absolutely. it can, 
it can take up some of your time and it you know can be expensive would so. would you say that that had an integral part in your success now? Do you think if you look back oh, on that coaching? Absolutely, absolutely. And then that's what led me. I was um, ultimately uh, the coaching company that I was with that I feel changed my business. Um, the two the two owners of that company ended up joining EXP Realty, mm -hmm. and that's what led me to EXP Realty because I saw what they did for my business and I trust them and I believe in them. Sure. And you know, now I'm able at EXP to benefit from their coaching and not pay that large monthly fee. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get the so, best of both worlds, right? You get to be yeah. close to them without paying the money. It's exactly. Good. Yes. <laughs> so now how long have you been with uh, EXP? Uh, since the end of October, 2018. So just nice. a few months. Okay. Awesome. And where your business is at right now, uh, mm -hmm. talk, talk to me about kind of what you're focused on, I know we're getting into the spring market. I know a lot of people have t are talking about that, but where, what are you kind of focused on right now? So I have a small team. I have a buyers, uh, two buyers agents and an assistant. Mm -hmm. And so they really focus on buyers and um, I try to focus on my sellers and my listings. Not that I don't ever work with buyers, but it depends on the situation. If it's a referral or if it's a seller that's also buying. Um, so I am focusing on the listings and, and sellers. And yes, the spring market is starting. So it's going to be interesting. Last year was just a, in our area, it was a crazy, and I think it was like this in a lot of parts of the country, but mm. it was just a crazy time out of nowhere. It just became the se a seller's market. Right. And, you know, homes were getting multiple offers and selling above list price. Right. So I don't know if that's going to happen this year. Is it but, low inventory still? It's low inventory here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Especially in certain price ranges, it's low inventory. Got it. What What do you do as, as a realtor? Like when there is low inventory, are you door knocking to try to get more inventory? Like what, what's, what's your take? To try to get listings. And yeah. I, I'm not a door knocker. Okay. I think I have done it. And I'm, I, you know, I try to do things that are me and I try to put myself in the position of you know, sellers or homeowners. And, you know, the last thing I want is someone to knock on your door. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm like hiding somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, Who the hell is ringing my doorbell? That's me. You sound um, like my wife. That's my <laughs> wife. Like she won't even get up. She's like, who is that? Yeah. Yeah. I know. No, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I have a great relationship with my past clients. Excellent. So keeping in touch with them. And, um, you know, if I have a listing in a development, and there's a lot of activity, a lot of buyers, you know, reaching out to homeowners, but not knocking on their door, right. um, just to see if they're looking to sell. And, you know, I'm not one to try to push someone and say, oh, you know, you got to sell, got to sell, you got to sell or force them, right. but just educating and informing them and letting them know what's going on in the market. And if they are, you know, considering selling or they were thinking about it, you know, now may be the time due to the lack of inventory and prices going back up. Right. How, how have you seen uh, the industry change a bit, right? You've been in it for a little bit of time. What are, what have been some two or three of like the biggest places that you've seen changes uh, in the, in the real estate industry? Well, I'd say the industry is completely different than when I started. And I think the number one change is social media mm. and the time and money that you can or must invest in that it becomes, and you know, a, a, a separate job, another job, <laughs> uh, aside from what you do every day. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So for me, it's been challenging. And, you know, I've tried a lot of different things. I've outsourced things. But then, it, you know, when you do that, it's not really you. It's not genuine. Right. And who wants to, like, look at canned, you know, articles that right. you didn't write or you don't have an input in? It's right. not it's not providing true value. True. So you have to carve out the time to get on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, and provide value. Sure. You know, what's, um, what's, what's your strategy right now? Or is it just about putting out content on platforms uh, or what are you doing? I don't know. When I figure out my strategy, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't I know my strategy. I think I'm just trying to you know, I guess I struggle a bit with, because, you know, and if, if for me, I, I go on like Facebook and I get anxiety written. Like, 
I'm like, oh my God, this person's selling this house and they just listed this and they did this. And it, and I'm like, I, I suck. I'm a failure. You know? <laughs> that you is just, the one thing social media is not good at, right? It's yeah. not good at for, for us comparing ourselves right. to other people. And right. that's, that's a big downfall, but I, yeah, I understand. So, you know, trying not to do that because you start to look at yourself and be like, oh, uh, you know, they're so much better than me. Right. So I, I, I do struggle with that. Yeah. What, what impact specifically do you think social media has had on the industry? Like what has it changed? What has it changed? Um, because there's always been marketing, right? Like as a realtor, you've always had to market it. You either did flyers or signs in the yard or whatever, but, um, uh, newspaper articles, magazines, benches, right? It's, it's all been the same. So then what really has social media done in your opinion to the industry? You know what? That's a good question. I never really thought of it that way. Um, I'm not, you know, it's, I, I'm not sure what it's done. I think it's provided maybe, or it's more competition. Like I'll give you an example. You know, we have like our local Facebook groups for the town we live in. Right. And someone, I mean, it happens sporadically, but I think people are learning, will go and say, oh, we're thinking of selling our house. Does anybody know a good realtor? And I'm like, oh, that poor person doesn't even know <laughs> what they just did. Uh, because you'll get- You're about I, to get 150 <laughs> messages yeah, on people that yeah. uh, think they can yeah. sell a home. Yeah, so everybody, you know, just, and then now they have the person's name, they, have, they can get the person's address, phone number, and you know, so I think it's just made it a little bit more competitive mm -hmm. where if that person had said to, oh, to a friend or somebody and not put it out there on social media, the friend would have said, oh, you know, let me give you a name or two or let me ask around. Right. But when it's out there on social media, you have every realtor in town now competing for one listing. Sure, sure. So, and, that's, and, and that's been the struggle. As I've talked to other realtors, as I've talked to people in, in my industry, uh, at the end of the day, it's just we have to grasp how to use social media and what it's supposed to be used for. There are a lot of people that are just talk; they're just posting. They're just posting a bunch of things, and that doesn't. That's not actually going to build community. What I use social media for, and uh, I know a lot of my colleagues that I, I talk with about social media, we understand that social media is 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 meant to. I look at it more to document what you're doing over right. trying to create the nicest advertisement, the nicest, you know, picture of your house, whatever the case is. I know that, and you, and you understand the same thing, Melissa, that people are going to buy from people that they like and trust and respect and know. You have right. to know your realtor. You have to know the person you're going to. So that's what social media should be used for is to put out enough content that people then know who you are. Right. Not the, that. Not the, exactly. Not the you that, you know, goes and rents, you know, and I didn't, I've never done this, a Lamborghini or whatever. <laughs> sure you haven't. Sure. <laughs> no, joking. But, but exactly right. It's, it's the true you, the authentic you. People want authenticity. Mm -hmm. authenticity is what will actually cut through the noise because in on social in social land we don't believe most of the stuff we see right right so it's actually the authenticity that will cut through and especially being in uh, uh, an industry like real estate where everyone is not ready to buy or ready to sell it right. just becomes a brand play it becomes right. about your brand more than it is about you trying to sell this home and make it transactional when, what I find is a lot of realtors and a lot of people in real estate specifically try to make social media transactional. I, I put up this listing so that you could buy from me. Right. I put up the, right, my number so you can call me. I, that's right. what it's about. Really what I think it should be about is what's your life? What's your right. day to day? Are you funny? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Are you happy? I think you struggle with that because I, and I, I think this is maybe the post you're referring to when I, uh, was it the one that I was like, what's going on in this market? That's exactly it. I, I was going to allude to it because I, I prefaced it at the beginning, but now right. we'll get right into it. I read a post that you made on Facebook that okay. basically said, like, um, what's going on in our real estate market right now? And you gave an example of, I guess, talking to a, I believe it was a client or a someone. Else. Okay, a seller. And they were talking about what another agent had offered them, which right. was basically 
nothing like you know just some hopes and dreams of not having to pay commissions and all types of things right yes and elaborate you know, on that i posted that you know i got a call i got you know a couple of agents that i'm friendly with they called me and one of them was like that was a great post somebody needed to say it and then the another agent calls me and she goes stop posting on facebook you're making a fool of you <laughs> and i was like i am and she's like melissa you know you can't put that stuff out there i said look i'm I, i'm sorry this is me and this is what i experienced and yeah not everybody's going to agree or feel that I should maybe speak my mind, but not everybody likes everybody, you know? So I, I think that it's important to let, you know, the consumers or the people outside of the industry know what's really going on okay. and what, you know, is reasonable and unreasonable and what people are telling you just so to get your listing, you know, it's not right. It's just not right. And, and you're seeing it happen more and more right more. now, right? you know, where people go in and they promise them. I mean, and the thing is, is that it's hurting the seller in the long run because they're going in telling them a price that they're never going to get. But the agent wants the listing because then they can advertise themselves and be like, oh, I got this listing. And then the seller's going to say, well, why isn't it selling? And then the agent's going to keep saying, well, you got to drop the price, drop the price, drop the price. And the seller's going to end up selling for less than had they priced it correctly from the beginning. Right. And, but people don't understand this. I get it. If, you know, if I wasn't in the business and I had two agents come in and one says, I can sell your home for a million. And another says I can sell it for seven fifty. Who, you know, who am I likely to sign with? You're going with the million. Yeah. I want, I want a 250,000 <laughs> more. Exactly. Exactly. And do you, what do you see is going to be the biggest detriment to that with seller or with, uh, with, uh, agents coming in and really just, not buying being able to, to deliver on their promises. Yeah, they're, bu they're buying the listing, you know? And it's unfortunate, but in this market that we're in with limited inventory, if a home sits on the market too long, it's, it just so. loses, it, you know, it's, it's freshness, it becomes stale. Everybody says, what's wrong with that house? Why isn't it selling? You know, and they end up dropping the price and dropping the price, whereas if they had priced it correctly, they likely would have gotten their, their 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 price. Sure, sure. I I recently heard that like Redfin and Zillow are jumping into selling homes. Have you heard that? Uh, I heard. I, it's funny. I just went to a broker open before here, and someone said that yes, Zillow is looking. To, well, I heard he, uh, buying homes. Okay. I I I've heard selling, but it could be buying. It could be. Oh, it could, be, it could both. be both. Yeah. Here's, here's what I think will happen, and this is just my own prediction of the industry because of what you said with the human error, right? Mm -hmm. What, what, what uh, human beings don't really like is when they're unsure which way to go, they just turn internally, right? Mm -hmm. So with the more that we have honest, sell, you know, honest agents and then agents that are just buying their listings, it's gonna get to a point where a person doesn't feel comfortable trusting the agent. So now they're gonna go direct to these these platforms like Zillow and Redfin because you don't have to deal with a human anymore. It's going to be a pretty standard. This is what you get. This is what it is. And so people are going to start to get more comfortable going that route. And that's why Zillow and Redfin are jumping in the game because as agents, honestly, a lot of they've given up the leverage over time. Right. They've given up the leverage to these other platforms that were helping now they're going to come in and start if if agents don't build on brand because that's what it comes down to if agents don't build on brand companies like zillow redfin and even some of these broker houses on the macro will start to do their own thing because the inefficiencies in the human behavior of a real of a realtor it's it's what we're seeing happen in all these other industries where they're just they're saying they're creating robots AI, all those type of things to eliminate jobs, but it's really just to eliminate the human errors that are happening in this transaction process. Right. And so if eventually that, that could happen. That's why going back to what we talked about on social, that's why building your brand on social is so important because that's the only thing that, that will last. Do and people, when you're saying, not to interrupt, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. I want to just clarify, when you're saying brand, you're meaning brand as you as the agent, not you as 
what brokerage you're with. Exactly. Okay. Correct. It's, it's, it's you, Melissa's brand. Like, who right. are not, you? Not. not, right? EXP, not Keller Williams, not Century yeah. 21, not Remax. They have their own brand. And again, agents have given up the leverage over the past 15 years or so to these broker houses because they want to be with Keller Williams or they want to be with Berkshire, right? And then all of a sudden, now we're in an era where it's direct to consumer with social media, you can literally just directly talk to the people that you want. And we're not, we're not taking advantage of it as much. That's why I'm a big proponent of social media. And you just putting out content every day it doesn't have to be pretty. Whatever your friend said about not putting stuff out on Facebook, don't listen to her. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's that's all this game. <laughs> I know, but there's but there's no protection if you want to build a business and you want to attend money follows attention. And this is a hundred percent in the real estate game is if people don't know who you are, you're not going to make money. Right. And I think the industry's changing and, you know, it's, it's, it's uncertain. I Absolutely. think, you know, it's, it's uncertain and it's definitely, it's changed since I've gotten in. And I, I think we're going to continue to see change in this industry. What do you think needs to happen in the industry right now for it to start to boom peak, right? Get to a place where it's, it's better. What would make the industry better? Uh, I think, well, I guess there's, you know, I guess a, a lot of different components to this, but as far as agents are concerned, I think, you know, we as agents need to w work together, not against each other uh, and really respect ourselves because people aren't aware what goes into this business and not only what we invest financially, but our time and a good agent works 12 to 14 hours a day. You know, I know, and, and they shouldn't have to know the back end, but, you know, when you have the paperwork and the logistics and the phone calls and the, you know, home inspection issues, appraisal, and on and on and on, mm -hmm. it's not as simple as it appears uh, from the outside. So I think as agents, again, we just need to work together and share value. It shouldn't just be about everybody's looking to stab everybody in the back. Right. And, you know, we're, we're, if I have a listing and you have a buyer, let's work to get it done. Let's, we shouldn't be on opposite sides. You know, we need to work together and, and put the transaction, you know, get the transaction through. Yeah. You know, of course, you're representing the buyer. I'm representing the seller. But just making it a win-win for everyone. Absolutely. And, you know, not doing things in the industry that are being done that give realtors, you know, that used car salesman mm -hmm. type of image. Sure. And things are being done like that. And I, I would love to be able to change that. I would love to be able to provide enough value so people can understand how much value a, an educated, informed, honest agent can provide them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you have the tools in your hand via social media. You can put out content and I know you already do put out some content, but right. conti continue to do it. Continue to just flood your timeline with a bunch of information and value that you know is going to help someone. And I guarantee they'll come to you when it's time for them to buy or sell their house. Like I, I guarantee it. That's the game that we're in right now. And uh, people just don't put out enough content. We're, right. we're keeping all of our information here and in our circle of people where we have platforms now of distribution that we can just talk right. whatever we want to. And people will actually, the ones that, that need the information, that grasp it, they'll get it and they'll come back to you for more. So uh, I, think, I th think you're definitely on the right path with it. Um, give, as we kind of wrap this thing up, give one or two, one or two uh, tips for the agents right now, the newer agents that are out there, what, what should they be working on? What should they be doing right now to really get their business going? Oh boy. Um, what should they be working on to get their business going? I think the biggest thing is making personal connections, you know, getting and, and sincere, honest connections and really caring about the people that they, they meet, you know, and, letting them know that they're a realtor and providing value and building that network. For me, my, my best source is my past clients. Mm -hmm. 
And because, because like you said, they know, like, and trust me. That's right. So building that foundation is number one would be my best piece of advice. Number two, just educating yourself, you know, so that you're informed of the current market where we're at, how things work. You know, you go to real estate school and they teach you things that you never really even need to know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Say, you could say that again for everybody that's trying to go to real estate school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then, you know, maybe just finding an agent that they can mentor, you know, even shadow for a couple weeks if possible. Mm. That's the best way, you know, it's just getting out there and doing it, you know, I, for me, my, I remember my first listing was making expired phone calls. So I just said, I'm going to stay on this phone all day till I get an appointment. <laughs> and <laughs> so, it happened and you got one. And I got one. Yes. Exactly. So just yeah. being consistent and not, not giving up because this business can be very, very overwhelming and very frustrating. And, you know, you got to just be persistent and keep, be, be persistent, consistent, and just keep pushing through. It's a lot of rejection. It's a lot of rejection. You can't take it personally. Mm. I say that, but I still take things personally. Of course, we all do, right? <laughs> it's funny because I give the same advice, but it's very true. There is a lot of rejection when you're trying to do anything great or build a business, and um, you have to be able to handle it and yeah. just, let, just let the chips fall where they may. Right. That's yeah. it. That's it. Awesome. So Melissa, I appreciate you jumping on. Tell the people where, where can they find you? Like what's, what's the easiest way to get in touch with you? Um, my website is melissadesantis.com and my cell phone is 732-757-2522. And my email is mdesantisrealestate at gmail.com. And then I'm basically all over social media with just Melissa DeSantis. Got you. Got you. So follow her, give her a call, reach out. She's obviously willing to provide value and uh, really educate you. If you have questions in the industry or in buying the home buying or home selling process, uh, feel, feel free to reach out. But Melissa really do appreciate you jumping on the podcast and um, hopefully we get to connect soon in person yes. and uh, figure out, you know, how I'll come to LA though. <laughs> <laughs> funny funny A absolutely so guys we're going to sign off for the uh for another episode of the pr of the property players podcast i'm c muzan i'll talk to you guys soon melissa take care okay thank you